Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Gacious Dude here, and today we're going to be talking about Mass Effect Andromeda. It's the newest game, the Mass Effect series. They've released a trailer at E3, and you kind of see some new things. Uh, it's It's been announced for a while now, but we still haven't really got anything like super like juicy, like super like something I can really dig into. Uh, even the trailer we got was more of what I'd like to call a like a concept trailer, mainly because like when when it shows like aspects of design and you know having like the designers kind of talk about stuff or like kind of describing what they're making as opposed to like you know having a character focused story focused trailer it's more of a concept to me like teasers you get little bits here and there you may not know what it means uh regular trailers you get story <laughs> and with concept you get like concept this is what we're making these are the cool things we're going to do. Check it out. <laughs> First thing I want to dig into is Andromeda is going to be a clean slate. I've got that feeling. They've kind of pretty much said it like we're no longer focusing on the Shepard story. Since we're starting off in a new slate, we're not going to have to have that whole Dragon Age keep thing going on. And if you don't know what that is, uh, basically Bioware's other game, Dragon Age, uh, if you played the game on a previous generation console and then you got uh, the newer game that was on a newer console, you go to that website and you fill in information and it would link like to the, it would basically allow a pamphlet for you to fill out the decisions you made so that the like dialogue you got in the new game reflected your choices from the old game, which I thought was really cool. It really like, like they didn't really have to do that, but they did it and I enjoyed that they did it, but like I like I also like the fact that we're starting a new game and we're not gonna have to do that like we can be far enough away that we won't have to deal with all that stuff I like it because it opens it up for new players if you haven't played it before you can play it now try this Mass Effect it's on a newer console if you like it you can play the older ones like it's great Andromeda is a galaxy that's 2.5 million light years from Earth so it's really far away <laughs> and the first trilogy takes place in the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy, in real life. <laughs> but yeah, it's really far away, and it's super far away from like everything Shepard did, and like, you know, all the people Shepard knew. So it's like, you don't have that need to like link everything together anymore. Like, you won't have to have like deal with like if you never played the original trilogy can you play this game without knowing what it is like you won't have those problems you got a clean slate we're starting over we're making a new character we're doing new things so that's a good thing I like that I love I love my shepherd you know I love him he's me <laughs> he's awesome but you know his story ended and I don't really need to like you can just make a guy that looks pretty much the same or a girl whatever you're into the way the story looks from the limited information we've got so far uh basically you're going to be the captain of a crew and the ship you were on got sent to the andromeda galaxy from the milky way galaxy you don't know why really but i would assume that maybe it was like it would be cool if it was like a last ditch effort like in case everything like in case the reapers destroy everything we need to get like basically like a noah's ark or something of like different races and everything because we've seen bits and pieces of like different members of the ship and you can see like there's Solarians, there's Krogans you've seen in Asari uh but like it'd be cool if they were like wait we're gonna send you all to the Andromeda galaxy and hopefully you know even if we don't survive you guys can live on or sent them there to make like uh outposts or something or set up some sort of system to like transfer people from the Milky Way to Andromeda Something like that. So it seems pretty cool. It would be cool if at the beginning of the game it starts out and you're like in like all hell's breaking loose and you're kind of like in the Reaper conflict and they're like, we need you to leave. And then they put you on the ship and then you go into stasis. Like, you know that they go into stasis because at the end of the trailer there's a part where the girl's laying in the thing. She wakes up and she's like, we're finally here. And I'm like, okay, that that usually in ship talk. Like, that doesn't look like a stasis chamber. <laughs> Because it's really big, and I'm used to like the pods and like the freezing, but she could, or she was just taking a nap. I don't know, but <laughs> it would take them a while to get there either way. So I would think that they probably were in stasis and got sent across. 
dark space to get there. Because dark space is the space between galaxies where the Reapers live. Another thing I noticed about the ship, probably not the Tempest itself, maybe, I don't know if the Tempest is the main ship or if there's like a bigger ship and then the Tempest goes off of it. Uh, I can't tell. It looks like a smaller ship. It doesn't look like it would be like good for long period space travel, which I think you would need considering like the situation you're in. So it might be part of a bigger ship or maybe the ship's just bigger than I think it is. Uh, but yeah, like another thing the ship can do, uh, I saw this in a trailer. I thought it was the, <laughs> this year's E3 trailer. I was looking up the E3 trailer and I, it was one of the links that showed up, but it was actually from last year and it was showing kind of like the ship display where you see a hand kind of waving through all the different environments and stuff. And then you see the, the galaxy map and, but the ship itself seems to have like what is it like warp speed or hyperspace travel like in it like basically what you would use the uh relays for like you remember in the other games whenever you would like go to a new place it would show your ship up next to a relay and it'd be like Sew! and shoot you there but in this trailer it showed like you pick a destination and then they went, they just kind of went into hyperspace and you were like in front of it. So that makes me think that the ship has those capabilities as opposed to you having to have relays because relays wouldn't be in this system because Protheans weren't in this, they were in the Milky Way. Like new things, all new things. <laughs> yeah, that leads me into my next point. It's like, what's the story going to be like? I really hope we don't get like a rehashing of... The original like they said like we're gonna make it different it's gonna be new and it looks like it's gonna be more like exploring driven like trying going to new worlds and finding new races and stuff like that and seems really cool <laughs> uh, but I also hope that the Reapers don't show up because that's what I was thinking about that's what's got me kind of like that's in my head because like everything you did in the the original trilogy took place in the Milky Way galaxy and all the like uh, relays were all in the Milky Way galaxy that amplified the signal in the Milky Way galaxy and the Reapers live in dark space which is outside of the galaxy and so and you don't really know how the Reapers work if they take down one galaxy at a time or if they only reap that one galaxy like there is a possibility that there are Reapers heading there at the same time that this crew is and I'm just like, I hope it doesn't, you don't just end up fighting the Reapers again. Because, you know, you already did that. And I want to do something new. And they're like, it's going to be new. And then the leader is an N7 person. So, <laughs> just like the last game. But honestly, I feel like it's going to be that, it's that difficult way of doing things. Because I don't know if any games have really done something like this. Where it had an original trilogy and then sprang off and it's like into another trilogy in the same universe I can't think of one but like that's a weird thing to do so I have a feeling like there are a lot there are gonna be a lot of things that they ha they have a unique job to do basically they're stuck in this way where they're like it's the same universe and it's based on these other games that people like so they have to stay true to that and they have to like give you enough from the original trilogy to like to make to make it feel like Mass Effect, but at the same time, new galaxy, new places to visit. Like we got to give you new stuff too. It's like you want to be like <laughs> as close to the old ones that people are like, this is Mass Effect, but not so new that people are like, what is this game? It's it's I feel it, and that's where I feel like the N7 really comes from. Like not so much them having to like them just having another soldier player character like you're the same person pretty much no it's like I think that N7's kinda gotta be there cause it's like it's become such a big thing about the the trilogy and the series and everything like they even have the N7 day November 7th oh my god it's N7 but all that stuff so it's it's kinda stuck in there now plus like you notice that the new ship the Tempest looks a lot like the Normandy. Once again, I think it's one of those things where they're like, we kind of got to give you, 
we got to give you the old thing, but the new thing, we got to ease you into the new. So I feel like the first game's going to have to ease you in. Uh, I just hope that it doesn't it doesn't do the same thing too much. You, you have to find a balance. It's like the new Star Wars movie. It's like they're like, oh, it's like the old movies, but it's like the but it's also new and kind of different. It's it's that balance. You have to find it, and it's really hard to do. And I don't blame them for you know throwing in some of the old stuff, making it look like the old stuff to get the new stuff. But there's gonna be so much new stuff though. Like that's the thing. We're in a new galaxy. And you gotta think about that because whereas I think you have like a ship with the races we're used to seeing, like the Asari, the Salarians, the uh, Krogans, uh, all that. Like they're gonna be on the ship, and we, like they're the known races. But like being the fact that like the trailer started with like humanity has always sought to like seek out new galaxies or like explore like it's a heavy emphasis on exploring like we haven't been to Andromeda before <laughs> like when we go there it's not like we're just gonna get there and it's gonna be like all humans like hey what's going on humans what's going on other Asari what's going on other Krogans except there was that there was that one picture of a Krogan with the big horn which may be like a new variant race <laughs> I don't know but like you get what I'm saying like it's gonna be so much new stuff I wonder how they're gonna like how it's all gonna work out, and I'm interested to see like all of them. there have to be new races and stuff. Like that's the thing that's got me kind of on edge too. It's like you're you're exploring, but at the same time, like all the the visuals we've seen so far, there didn't seem to be like cities. There's like just small things. It's like mostly nature, mostly like deserted planets. I want to see like civilizations i want to meet other races i want to do stuff like that that that's the cool stuff like just going there and like exploring is cool but like i don't know you need more to it you know what i'm saying can't just keep going to empty planet after empty planet doing i don't know what there has to be a bigger story like that's the thing i'm trying to figure out what is the story going to be like i don't think it has to be as grandiose as the original trilogy like we have to save the galaxy it's like it'd be cool if we could just explore it <laughs> and maybe there's conflict and we have to deal with that maybe it's like some star trek shit <laughs> where it's like we're just going to a new galaxy every week and there's we're meeting all the people and doing cool shit and having like more of a personal story with the crew and everything uh, i don't know the game runs on a new engine it's called the frostbite and Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> uh, like, everything in this game, like, so far that I've seen looks great. There's that one clip where they show the Asari woman, and I'm like, this is it. Like, this is graphics. This is, like, I had in that moment where I just jumped it forward in my head, like, because, like, when I was a kid, it was pixels, and then it was, like, polygons, and like people's faces didn't move and they just uh, uh, when they spoke they just did like exorbitant gestures or like shit like that and because that was the only way they could show anything now we can show emotion without any like any like hinting at what it means or like having them have to say something so you really understand it or like extreme body language it's like now we can show minor things and get a real good picture of what the characters are like that's it's great because it gives so much more to the characters and that's really what I care about like this sorry chick like in that one small moment said a lot it felt like about her character she was like more the happy-go-lucky kind of goof of the group because she's like hey she's kind of happy and then like that sword or whatever comes up next to her head and she's like oh <laughs> like you can just see the scenario that that would happen in like her like stumbling on the other people and they're they're like being like captured or something and she's like hey everybody oh. <laughs> and i'm like yeah i like her i perhaps perhaps romance <laughs> i realize that, that i had I romance somebody different in each of the games, but I realized that their personalities were all the same. Their personalities were always like the kind of sweeter, innocent, like really nice people. 
Like, it was, uh, oh, what's her name? Liara was the first one, and she was really nice, but then, like, in the second one, she became, like, Shadow Broker and did all that stuff and kind of got mean. And, and then, so in the second one, it was Tali, and then the third one, it was Ashley, because she was really mean in the first one, but then she was really nice in the third one. <laughs> uh, I have a type. <laughs> uh, <and laughs> I'm so super cool, I play video games, you know? talking about fictional relationships with video game characters but damn it that's all part of it <laughs> I embrace who I am and I enjoy it I'm not going to hide from it <laughs> I'm going to leave that part in you can enjoy that part because you know that you have given the same amount of thought to it as I have <laughs> but yeah like I said there wasn't a lot there there was a lot of stuff that looks good and it looks great and but not a lot of those story stuff not a lot of things for me to dig my teeth into so as now that's really all I got I just kinda wanted to make a video kinda like my reaction to it and like my thoughts and everything so yeah that's all I got for now I'll see you guys later